In this video, I will show you how to prepare, build, and release your app to the iOS App Store. The App Store is where the iOS users go to download their apps. So, as a developer, you want your apps to be featured there. But to upload your app and have it ready for download by millions of users, there are some steps that you need to follow. You will first need to register a bundle ID and create your application record in App Store Connect. Once that is done, you will go back to Xcode to review your project settings and create a build archive. And finally, release your app to the App Store. In this video, I assume that you have a developer account since this is required to publish to the App Store. I also assume that you have already prepared your app for release. That means you have changed the app name, added an icon, and splash screen. If you haven't done that yet, please check this playlist where I explained in detail how to change icons, add splash screens, and change app names. The link will be in the description below. As mentioned earlier, to build and release your app on the App Store, you need to register your app bundle ID on the Apple developer website. The bundle ID is a unique identifier for your app. Apple encourages developers to use the reverse domain name notation for the bundle identifier. It is equivalent to the app ID for Android. To find your app bundle ID, you need to open the iOS module of your project in Xcode. To do that, you can right-click on the iOS folder, then select Open in Xcode. Or you can run this command in the terminal. This will open your project in Xcode. Once Xcode opens, go to Runner, then Target Runner. Your bundle ID is here. Let's copy it. To register this bundle ID, you will first need to sign into your Apple Developer account. On this page, you will click Certificates, IDs, and Profiles. In this left menu, choose Identifiers, then click the plus sign. Make sure App IDs is selected, then continue. Again, make sure App is selected, then continue. On this page, you will enter your app name. Select Explicit, then here you will paste the bundle ID you copied earlier. One thing that is important to keep in mind is, this bundle ID must match the bundle ID that is in Xcode. That's why you copied it from Xcode. If your app uses any of those services, like in-app purchase, select it, then click Continue. If everything is good, click Register or back to change your inputs. Now that you have registered your app bundle ID, you can create your application record in App Store. To do that, we will first open App Store Connect by navigating to this link. On the App Store Connect landing page, click My Apps. Click Plus in the top left corner on the My Apps page. Then select New App. In this dialog box, you will provide some general information about your app. For the platforms, you must check at least one. Then enter the name of your app as it will appear on the App Store. Choose the primary language of your app. For the bundle ID, you should see the bundle ID you registered earlier. Select it. If you don't see it, try to refresh the page. The SKU is an internal ID for your app that is not visible on the App Store. And for the user access, you may choose Full Access. Once you're done, click Create. Now, we are almost done. But before we continue filling this page, let's go back to Xcode to review the project settings and create the build archive. You will come back to this page later to finish setting up your store page and submit the app for review. Here in Xcode, from the Project Navigator, select the Runner project. Then, select the Runner target in the main view sidebar. Go to the General tab. Here, you need to verify the most important settings. In the Identity section, you should double-check your app display name. This is the name that will appear under the app icon after installation. Then, the bundle identifier. As mentioned earlier, this should match the bundle ID you registered on App Store Connect. The version also known as the version number or CF bundle short version string is a string that is used as the app version and its main purpose is to be displayed to users. It generally follows the format of three numbers separated by dots. The build, also known as build number or CF bundle version, is a string that is used as an internal version number used to track this build. It is not shown to the users. Each time you are creating a new build to upload to the App Store Connect, you must increase the build number. And each time you want to publish or update an app, you must change the version number. Now, there are many ways that you can change those two values. You can change them directly here in Xcode, or you can change them in the pubspec.yaml file by setting the version property. Here, this first part is the version number. 
and after the plus is the build number. I would suggest you to use the PulsePack.yaml because when you build your app, Flutter will automatically update the appropriate field for each platform, as explained in this comment here. Since we changed the PulsePack.yaml, let's build the app using this command, Flutter build iOS. Now, if we go back to Xcode, we can see that the version and the build have been updated. In the deployment info section, you can specify the target iOS version and the target device type and orientation for your app. Unless your app has some specific features or target specific devices type, I would suggest you keep the default option selected. Make sure that you have the correct app icon and launch screen here. If not, check this playlist where I explain how to add a custom splash screen and icon to an iOS app. The link will be in the description. Now, let's move to the sign in and capabilities tab. Here, I would suggest you to check automatically manage signing since this should be sufficient for most apps. For most complex scenarios, check this link in the description. For team, you should select the team associated with your Apple developer account. Now, the most important settings have been updated. You are ready to create the build archive and upload it to your app page we created earlier on Apple Connect. To do that, you will first go to the menu bar and select product, then scheme. Make sure that runner is selected. Then go to destination and select any iOS device or generic iOS device. You should see your selection here. Now you can go to product again and select archive to produce a build archive. This may take some time depending on your app and machine performance. Once this is done, a window like this one should pop up. If not, you can go to window in the menu bar and select organizer. In this window, you will select the build that you just produced, then click Distribute App. In this wizard, keep the default option selected and click Next to continue. If you are happy with everything here, click Upload. Now, Xcode will upload your app to App Store Connect. Be patient, this may take some time. The upload is completed. Click Done. Now, Apple will process your build and notify you by email when it is ready. In my case, it took less than two hours. Now, back on App Store Connect, make sure Prepare for Submission is selected on the iOS app, then scroll down to Build. Click the plus sign. Then, select the build you uploaded earlier. If you don't see it, try to refresh the page. Then, click Done. Now, you only have to fill out the required information, add your screenshots, and set a price for your app. When all that's done, you will come back here and click Submit for review. Apple will review your app before releasing it. This may take one to three days. In this video, we saw how to publish your app to the App Store. To learn more about how to prepare and publish your Flutter apps on iOS or Android, watch this video or that video. Since you made it so far, please give us a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future content.